<laughs> Excellent. Hopefully no one's um hopefully everyone sees that. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to get everyone I can at uh, of course I can't do that because I I I need like another screen or something, but whatever. Um oop, oh, I need my water. I'm gonna do this for a long time. Oh no. Oh no. So yeah. Oh no, I forgot to change the title. Oh no, I'll be... Mm, I forgot. I apologize. I need to change that title. I forgot about the title. I was so enamored. Talking about Joker. Okay. So I'm going to update that. All right, so the update. Okay, close. So yeah, um, this is unusual because I just saw Joker for the first time, and um, it's really good. Meta stream, yes. Um, <laughs> are you streaming my stream? Is is that what's going on? <laughs> um, so have you seen this? Have 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 you seen the uh, Joker? Um, because I just saw it for the first time. I just, I just saw it. So, it wants fresh in my mind. I want to kind of go over it a little bit. Talk about it. While you're streaming. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. That's fine. So, I just, um... So, I just saw the Joker. I want to, um... So, spoiler away... <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm kind of going to talk about the whole thing. Because, uh, uh, but here's the thing, like, if, if you've never seen it, it's very, um, oh man. Because it, um, because it's, it's not that, um, there's many realistic films when it comes to the comic book world, I guess. This is definitely a comic book movie. It is... Set in a universe that is Gotham City, but it's very grounded when it comes to that city. Because, um, if you ever seen pics of like really downtown cities that have a big crime problem, this is what it looks like, especially during the um, it takes place during like sort of the Reagan era sort of thing where they started cutting um, social programs. And it stars uh, Arthur Fleck, which is uh, by Joaquin Phoenix. I, I, I don't know how to say it. I apologize. And um, the um, and so and the beginning of the film actually it starts because uh, the the film was presented like like it would be back then. Like it is a callback to the older films in the early '80s and the late '70s. Um, definitely has that feel uh where um so they're definitely going for a more artistic and grounded movie uh you have that sense right away because uh they don't use any of the film grain sort of thing like in um what was that uh that double movie by quentin tarantino um the planet terror and um and the other one Grindhouse, yeah, it doesn't have that grindhouse uh, thing going on. Uh, so it it doesn't have that uh, that sort of feel, but still, Quinterno is really good. Like, uh, Inglorious Bastards is one of my favorite movies. It is so freaking good, but uh, it has, but it definitely has that feel, but it doesn't have the grain. So you're having this sort of like uh, view of Gotham City. Gotham City is a crap hole, as said on the radio by the uh, by the radio man, and um, and you, they're talking about how like um, they they're, they're they're cutting all the benefits to the lower class, uh, social services, government projects, and um, and Arthur Fleck, the 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 main character, I guess you call him the protagonist. He's a uh, he he's working as a sign spinner. If you ever seen those sign spinners, like outside of banks or 
uh, outside of restaurants, they will spin the signs and they say, hey, come on in uh, to create traffic. And uh, this place is going out of business and Arthur Fleck is actually doing a really, really good job. Like, our, uh, Arthur Fleck is like, whoosh, like he is like, he's, he's doing like Harlem Globetrotter tricks with it. Like he's spinning it with his fingers. And I'm like, dude, that's pretty good. Like he's really good at it. Like he's not like, um, and he's re- and, he, and he's really enjoying it. Like he has a genuine smile on his face. Like he's seems like this normal person doing his job and having fun with it because he's dressed as a clown. Because um, he works for a agency which uh, hires clowns. Um, the, I mean they they literally sign people up to um, to advertise for other people or to. Um, you know, do charities, you know? And, like, that's a totally realistic thing to do. You know, like, um, for example, uh, later on, he gets hired to, um, to go to the children's hospital. And, uh, you know, and go for the sick, you know? And he really enjoys it. But these, um, kids, they steal a sign. If you watch the trailer, the kids steal a sign. And that happens, like, in the first five minutes you know it's a uh it's a really bad scene for him because um he he runs after him was like hey that's my property and he tells people to stop him but these people could not care less about what is going on he crosses the street and these kids um they sneak attack him by 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 hitting with the sign as he runs by then they just beat him up and they're like well why would they do that well because they probably portray kids who probably live in an impoverished neighborhood, you know? Uh, they're just being kids, you know? They, they don't need a reason to do something bad. You know, that's the thing about kids in movies nowadays, or even, like, kids in general. Like, they're so sweet and innocent, and, like, no, they're not. They're little monsters. They're just honest about it. They don't need a reason. They don't think through it. They just do things, you know. But it is kind of interesting that, like, they'll say, like, he says, like, beat him up. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, okay. Like, I, I get it that kids are mean and cruel. But, like, I don't know. It just seems interesting that the kid would go back and tell him to beat him up. And I'm like, why? You took his sign. You had your fun. Okay, sure. Like, but they're they're doing it because they they probably have nothing better to do. They could have been in school. They're probably um, either it's the weekend or school has been cut or something like that. I don't know. It's it's very interesting. And then he comes he comes back and um, and so uh, so so the people who are uh, who hired him. Or, or, or the agency said, um, what happened to the sign? We need that sign. Um, and so the reason why Arthur was really going after the, um, um, going after the kids is because, uh, that sign comes out of his paycheck. And you see that later on when they complain, it's like, Hey, that, uh, that sign was ours. Like, and uh, you need to reimburse us. And, uh, and they're like, okay. So it's, so it came out of his paycheck. He gets yelled at. You know, any... Um, and the, the people around him seem to enjoy his company. Like, he's not, like, bad or anything. And then, like, um, he goes home. And he's on the subway trying to make a little, a little kid laugh. And he does. But the mother is like, don't you dare talk to him. Like, and he's like, and he starts to laugh. You know, it's like, you think this is funny? And so, um, he gets this card that's covered in plastic. And it says, like, I have a neurological disorder. Um, he laughs whenever he sort of has tension or, uh, or, 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 or something like that. You know, and, uh, so he's like, okay, he's like, he, he, he apologizes and he's trying to say like, no, and he keeps laughing and he can't help it. And so I, so the famous stairs r- right, right there, it reminds me of the exorcist stairs and like, there's a long stairway that's famous now 
<laughs> like there's another another stairwell, you know. And so when he goes up the stairs, he has his head down. And I'm like, okay. I I I get what you're laying down, movie. <laughs> because like you see, he has his head down going up the stairs because it's a struggle for him to go up those stairs because he's had a bad day. You know, so going up the stairs means that um he's not happy because the life is like the stairs. You know, you have to cl- you have to climb it and there's no reward for climbing it. Like it it it's some kind of like um the sort of like it's the, the stairs kind of represent depression sort of. It, it's 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 like um it's his life that n- now he has to climb it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because later on, if you've ever seen anything from the Joker, like from that picture, um, he um, he has the suit on and he's dancing. I'm like, yeah, that's him actually being happy. He is over it. Like, he's dancing on top of the stairs and he's going down the stairs, um, which also represents him not, um, not being normal or um, he's... He, He's over the normal part of society, um, so he goes down. But he's also, but he's happy. He's going down the stairs, you know. Like it's 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 easier. Dancing in the street, yeah, sort of. And you see, to re- to remain above water, above your sanity, to uh, to someone with a someone who lives like this, is a huge struggle. You know, so he kind of takes the easier way out by going down the stairs. So I don't know if I'm making any sense sort of that, but I kind of feel that's what that's what they were kind of going for. You know, when, when it comes to that, and so um, he goes home to his to to his mom, and uh, he 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 lives with his mom, and um, which is because like she has nowhere else to go. She's kind of off. Because like uh, he checks the mail every day because he uh, her mom tells him to because the, we need a mail from uh, Thomas Wayne. It was like I used to work for them. He's like okay, I'll ch- I'll check the mail, mom. You know, kind of begrudgingly, and there's nothing ever there. You know, and she says she writes them, but I don't know if she really does. And so they watch this um, the uh, I forget what the what the show is called but they they watch pretty much like a um a late night talk show which was um in downtown gotham which stars robert de niro on there but he's not called robert de niro but it is robert de niro and he tells jokes and does all this stuff pretty much typical talk talk show stuff and so arthur imagines being in the audience and he laughs and and he's like who is that up in the audience? You know, like, uh, turn on the lights. And so uh, they turn on the lights. It's like, you there. You there in the stands, you know, because it's obviously he's kind of imagining it. But I don't know. It's It could be a memory. Rip show starring not Robert De Niro. <laughs> not starring Robert De Niro. Yeah. Um, save that for later. <laughs> and so um, he was like, he said, come on down. Like, he lives with this mom is like I still my mom my mom until I made it you know pretty much like picturing as the same guy and so like he's imagining that like they're there together and they're having a good time like it's almost like a um a father figure sort of like a like he he idolizes his talk show host and and it's like okay so if I just make it on there in the audience to see him, maybe I'll be recognized as 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 somebody. You know, because you learn also later on that he wants to be an aspiring stand up comedian, uh be because of all that, because he thinks he's really funny. And uh and so very much so like um they talk about how the garbage is piling up on the streets and you see it because there's uh there's like garbage in the streets piled up like six feet to seven feet high like it is insane 
how high these garbage bags get. And these are black garbage bags, trash, and it's everywhere. And they're talking about like they've seen super rats. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like Gotham is in the toilet. But when you look at the rich people, they have it pretty good, you know? It, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I... That's what I was kind of saying. Actually, um, it's still in Chicago, and I'm like, eh, it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> New York City, yeah. Because it's like, yeah, because, like, um, I was on Imagine That, too, because that's a very real thing, you know, that I've seen in, like, um, pictures of downtown areas that are trashy, you know? I'm like, geez, man, this 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 place is terrible. <laughs> uh so um and so she uh he goes to see this therapist and that's where he gets his medication from he takes like seven kinds of medication is what you're, you're told it's to keep his um neurological disorder like from from popping up all the time or to probably to keep him sane in this like because uh mental um it's sort of like right now them the mental um, stress it causes the people makes them go nuts and uh, and the city has reached a boiling point which is why the political commentary of the film actually does really work because of the it kind of reflects what's kind of going on right now because um, people are losing their jobs their um, the, the government funding is being sliced in half and um and, and people are stressing out and they don't get the medication they need and um, depression is on the rise you know so but you can tell that so something's gonna go wrong in, in the city real soon and they even see that on the news the radios and all that stuff like it's it's gonna boil over soon you know it's only a matter of time and um, and so he goes to the therapist who um, tells him that we can't see each other anymore. I'm probably skipping one because he has a journal. Uh, it's like, you didn't bring your journal. He's like, I put my jokes in the journal, all that stuff. And I put my disturbing stuff also in the journal, you know. And uh, I think that's one of the main reasons that his his form of comedy that, that, that he uses in the film is so disturbing. Because uh, he crosses the pages of jokes and the disturbing stuff it kind of crosses paths in his journal and uh, i don't know if his mind can make up the difference you know and that's and that's one of the reasons i think why he has that medication you know and um and so it's pretty much less uh so the psychiatrist later on says we need to cut they're cutting funding which means i can't see you anymore and she's living in the bottom of a basement like you can see the street level outside her window I think and uh, and she is surrounded by paper like major amounts of papers everywhere and, um, you, and you can tell she is over um, overworked like um, and being inside of social services um, myself um, it, it it's not that bad nowadays but uh, I can kind of tell I'm like wow look at all those government papers I've seen uh, I've seen a office like that where we talk about the government uh, but not that bad and as depicted in this movie you know and then she breaks down and said listen Arthur they don't care about me and they and they don't care about you like just do the best you can and she and like it's obvious they don't care about them. It's it's obvious by the way, they um, and she is and c because she's correct. Because all I do is look at the office, and look look at how Arthur lives and all this stuff. Because it is terrible where where they live. They live in like in a two room apartment with two people. Even that's too much. Like it is insane that and he takes care of his mom too. Because she can't take care of herself. So he has to get a job. He has to uh, pay the rent. He has to do all the stuff. And and um, he has to cook for her. And 
they probably survive on like um, TV dinners or something. Because man, uh, even like his mom admits that he has no he has no um, muscle, and yeah, you see his bones all the time. It is creepy. Like um, he'll stretch, and you can see his rib cage. It is like ew. <laughs> I don't want to see that. But yeah, um, so he, it, it, it's this downward spiral of things going wrong in his life. And, um, and, but it, there are some bright spots that pick him right back up, like his medication helps, and he meets this woman on a, um, on an elevator w with her kid. And, um, and they sort of like, they don't exactly hit it off, but they're like, I understand. And it's like, <laughs> all, all, all this stuff. And, um, so, and so as they continue to see each other and talk to each other and, um, it is kind of interesting because they have these really odd conversations and that kind of and that kind of makes sense later but it's really odd like he talks uh he uh jokes about like people dying it's like and she kind of agrees and i'm like um what <laughs> i'm like because some of the disturbing thoughts could have leak out and i'm like why is she laughing at that <laughs> I'm like, this is so weird. Like, their their relationship is really, really weird. And, um... You get context for that later, but it's like, wow, okay. Uh, I guess some people are weird together, or... They're trying to find sanity with each other. Because, hey, some people get fetishes. Sure. <laughs> so, um... So he gets fired from his job because um, a guy from work gets Arthur a gun to defend himself because he got beat up by the kids earlier. So he gives him a gun and uh, he, he put it on his leg and so Arthur gets uh, uh, caught with it on a gig at, at, at the hospital. Like he's doing a dance. If, if you're happy and you know it and he stomps his feet against the ground and the gun falls out in the middle of his act <laughs> and so he gets chewed out and he says he gets fired over the phone and he realized that his friend said yeah I I didn't give it to him he he asked me for it in fact he wanted money so his friend sold him out and um, so he he always takes the, um, not, it's not the subway. It's more like the L train, you know, it's above ground, you know, cause it's, uh, again, it's Chicago. If you've ever seen trains plays on automobiles or, uh, where they have the train and they're on top, you know, uh, that's pretty much what it looks like. It's, it's definitely above ground train. If you've ever seen Blues Brothers, it's like that as well. Or if you ever seen any any movie with Chicago, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So, so he takes that home or whatever, and it keeps going out on on certain certain times. You know, the, the lights go out, and he sees that this woman is being harassed by these um, Wayne Enterprises employees who are drunk. I mean, they are like wasted, and they start to. Well, her, first they're uh, they're like, hey, you you want to get together and all that stuff, yeah, and she's like, no, and then she's like, you want this fry? I'm like, no, <laughs> and so they start to mess with her a little bit more, and uh, they start to laugh at like what what they're doing because they're drunk, you know, they they're not thinking straight, and Arthur's like, 
a tick goes off where he laughs uncontrollably. And they're like, you think something's funny? Huh? And they go to bother him instead because they got their attention and he's still laughing. And they start to sing, like, bring in the clowns. Like, bring in the clowns. You know. And, and so it all comes to a head. You know, because we all know as audience members that he has a gun. You know, and he's pushed. And the boiling point for Arthur, after all this bad stuff is happening to him, you know, and not being able to get his medication now because he's being cut from government programs, it starts to come to a head. Like, he can't handle it anymore. So he defends himself by getting the gun and and shooting the the two people. And the third one, because there's three of them, he runs, he runs for his life as Arthur co- contemplated what he did. Because he is in the moment and he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know that he shouldn't do it anymore or whatever. But he's just had enough. He has a look on his face like, I need to make sure that I don't get caught doing this. And so the other two are self-defense. You, you could say are self-defense, but the next one is murder. Because he fires at someone fleeing from him on the steps, you know, of the, of, of, of the subway station. He's like, and he fires a couple more times. So yeah, that's, that's murder. And that's, you know, and he, and he wastes all of the, and wastes all the bullets on him, on this one person. Um, in fact, he's on this, he's on this adrenaline kick and he goes and goes into this bathroom and after the adrenaline runs off he realizes that all that power he had that he never had before made him feel so good he starts to creepily dance in this really disgusting bathroom and I'm like oh my gosh (laughs) like it's uh. and by the way this movie wonderfully shot like it's you can tell they use that money to actually get like good shots um there's not really any sort of like good um there's some special effects that I'm like hmm <laughs> like I don't know if I believe that <laughs> but um y- you'd have to be paying close close attention if to catch it though it's like hmm but it passes by so quick. Like, yeah, sure. Okay. And so um, he starts to just, like, get on this um, high about what he, he does and how he's trying to justify now what he does in his own mind. It's definitely something like, uh, now this is kind of turning to an interesting character study of Arthur Fleck. And so, um, I don't quite remember all the stuff that happens, but most of the stuff with the good stuff happens with this, with this girl. And in fact, he's so, (laughs) he is so successful. I mean, he's not successful, but he feels so good. Um, and so this woman that he meets with his little girl lives in the same apartment building. It has been so nice to, so nice to him. He, he goes, um... He goes to her door, knocks on it, and then like, and then like when she opens the door, he's like, I'm, I'm just going to make out. (laughs) And I'm like, uh, okay. (laughs) Oh yeah, I, I I remember what Arthur did to, uh, this odd conversation. So the odd conversation they have, I'm like, that's a really weird conversation for a romance, you know? And so... Arthur will uh, follow this woman. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a little bit. Yeah, because uh, he got, he just got fired from his job and he didn't have time to take the makeup off because he was, he was too depressed. You know, and then he killed all the people and like, eh, whatever. I'm like, I don't know. Uh, yep. 
Um, so earlier before that, she um, uh, she goes along her day and all that stuff, and Arthur is uh, stalking. And uh, and so after that, uh, she knocks on his door. And it's like, were you stalking me? It's like, yeah. It's like, well, next time, won't you break in? And like, I'll make sure to bring my gun next time. And I'm like, that's not romantic. That's creepy. I'm like, I'm like what? <laughs> I'm like, what kind of conversation is that? She's a psycho. Yeah, she's a psycho too. Yeah, which goes into later on, of of what happens. So, um, so pretty much like um, the as as Thomas Wayne is on the TV, he starts to uh, call people who um who do this clowns. You know the people who are like um they 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 heard like someone wearing clown makeup or something. And so they're like, yeah, the, the people who do this are clowns. And so these people who are at the boiling point of resisting society took that as a power word, pretty much. And they're saying like, oh yeah, you think we're clowns? We're going to be clowns. And so people are wearing clown masks now. And they're starting protests in the city. You know, they're... And... um and they use that sort of as their power, you know. Like they they turn that um, ne very negative word into a, a a a movement for themselves. It now becomes their power, you know. Um, and Arthur doesn't see that as a bad thing, really. He's like, I like this. I feel like I'm important now, you know. And um, even tells people, I'm like, people are now paying attention to me. And, and I like that. You know, and... So... Things continue to come to a head as they, um... Uh, they, they watch the talk show every night as, um... And so, uh, the mother goes into, um... Uh, she has, like, a heart attack. Or she has a stroke. Because she was... Maybe she was asked questions she'd know the answers to. And she got really defensive and... She couldn't handle the stress and had and had a stroke maybe after that, and so um, and the detectives ask him too at the hospital. It's like we need to ask you about the subway killings, you know. And um, which he did. He was like, I don't know, I don't. I was like, oh yeah, I heard about that, you know. Um, and he's like, did you cause this to my mom? And it's like, you know, because they tell her like. It kind of sounds like offhandedly that they may have caused it, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, but when, in Arthur's mind, they did cause her to have a stroke. And on that night, they see the late night TV show, and and um, and earlier on, Arthur was doing a uh, a stand up comedy set, and somebody recorded it there and sent it to the late night talk show, and, the, and he uses that in his opening. <laughs> And he makes fun of Arthur. Arthur doesn't take uh, kindly to this because he saw him as like this, his best friend or or a father figure, and so he sees it as a huge betrayal, and all this stuff, and and he starts to have delusions about him himself being related to Thomas Wayne, you know, being a son of, of Thomas Wayne. They had an affair or something. Or, but no, it turns out that he's adopted, and the mother lied to him for years. And as he finds out later on, and he tries to invade the 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 house of of the Wayne family, puts um puts on the clown nose, and tries to um, and Bruce is uh, very stoic as a kid still. And uh, it puts the um, fingers inside Bruce's mouth and makes him a smile. He says, there you go. And Alfred is like, the heck are you doing? No, like, the, what, what? And he says, like, and so he says, like, I know everything about what happened back then when my mom used to work here. It's like, uh, your mom's crazy. <laughs> and he takes that personally. He's like, no, she's not. I'm like, yeah, she is. 
And uh, so he um, he uh, he grabs Alfred, and but he sees Bruce react to him. He's like, um, "I'm gonna run away now." And so it's like, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay." So it's a again, like he's he is very un unraveling as a human being because all these he's trying to figure out who he is, and he doesn't know who he is. So he used to think he was a someone's son he turns out he's not he thought he was thomas wayne's son turns out he's not he thought he was a stand-up comedian turns out that he's not very good at it so what is he you know is you know who who is he he's trying to figure this out as his life is just life the city goes downhill like really fast at this point and um and when um he going to approach him again. There was this big protest at the, uh, um, at a, at a movie theater that, that they go to. And, and so somehow Arthur gets, um, there's an altercation. So Arthur uses it as an opportunity to get inside the, uh, get inside the theater. And he puts on a costume so he's not known right away. And, um, it's a, what do you call it, those, um, uh, it's not butler, it's a, um, usher. It's one of those old-fashioned usher, like, um, uh, costumes. And so, he, he goes around and, you know, he starts to watch the movie, he starts to enjoy it. It's a Charlie Chaplin movie. So I'm like, oh, okay. So he's a, it's, it's this huge, uh comedy thing everybody's laughing you know it's it's a very civil place it's a very clean place too like it is um i don't know if it's a theater for rich people i, I have no idea but man it is really really spiffy like it looks like um something from the original bioshock or something like it's like wow okay except it's not um it's like the bioshock infinite uh, DLC if you ever seen that it's like wow this place looks great <laughs> it's like um, and so um, of of Rapture anyway and um, so uh, one, when Thomas Wynn goes to the bathroom he uh, Arthur confronts him he's like I need to talk to you like I think I'm your son it's like no you're not your son your mother's crazy <laughs> and like stop saying my mom's crazy and so like um he punches Arthur in the face. He's like, stay away from my son or I'll kill you. Because uh, last time they met, um, he put the fingers inside Bruce Wayne's, uh, you know, th and probably heard that from Alfred. And, like, he came to the house. Like, you don't do that. <laughs> like, which is kind of funny. I've heard, like, uh, people say he gets punched for no reason. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, what? What? Like, that's not legit criticism of the movie. Because, like, he comes to the door, puts hands on, like, um, inside your son's mouth, main handles your, um, through a gate of your butler, which is trying to protect your son, and then you act crazy saying to this, saying, uh, you know, my son, and please have some compassion. Uh, yeah, he sh you should be arrested, but no, he punched you in the, he punched, he punched him in the face. And I'm like, no, that's not legit criticism. Stop it. <laughs> and so, um, I mean, I mean, like that. I mean, that 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 seems like a reasonable thing. To, I mean, that seems like the least you could do. Because I, would, if if I knew somebody like choked out a guy who was trying to protect my son, and you put son into his mouth, and then you reproach me about. Hey, I'm your son, and I'm acting a little aggressive toward you. I would do more than punch you in the face. Like, I'm like, I, I don't get it. So, I don't get the whole, like, why did you punch me in the face? It's unrealistic. I'm like, no, it's it's the least he could have done. <laughs> so, anyways, um, so after that, um, he gets called. Um, he, he kind of, like, it's kind of interesting because... Um, there's a nice shot when he's leaning against the bathroom when he, after he gets punched, uh, which is a nice bathroom, and then it shows him at home in the same position, like in this in the same 
shot it just goes boom and I'm like that's oh man that's real good cinematography and the 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 way to use a the way to use a camera and so he learns about all the things that happened to him and he decides that life is what he makes of it but it's 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 definitely in a bad way <laughs> and so he starts to realize that something isn't right in my life and so I need to do something about it so um, he gets the paperwork which finds out that he was um, he was adopted and um, no, not adopted but he was taken from the hospital and then like the the mom had a had a had a dad who was abusive toward them and he doesn't remember that and um, she let it happen she's just as psychotic and like thought is like but he smiled all the time it's like we found your son tied to a radiator like wh what <laughs> like so he must have blocked that out and so he has this psychotic breakdown um, in his head and he realizes that that woman that he was talking to was never really there that's the reason why she's psycho too is because no matter what he did she would approve of it and so um, he walks into her apartment and um, and he's like my daughter's my, 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 my daughter's in the other room and so he turns around and it's like does what she, what she did before which was holding a fingers to her like a gun to her head and it goes boom you know and like and so he does that back and and now realizes that that you're you're not real like and so i don't know if if she's not real or if that sh he liked her so much that he pretended that she, they like each other or like i don't know it could be either or because some of those interactions have to be somewhat real because how can you walk into someone else's apartment and um or you know and asking questions like that and because uh she was there uh, at the mother like um comforting uh, arthur at the hospital like she gave him a kiss on the head and then later on when he walks into her apartment and realizes that she's not real she says how is your mother and i'm like you should know She's at the hospital where you were there. <laughs> Looks like she's not real in some of the points that in some points in in the movie. So it's just his delusions. I wonder if his imagination about you know being together with this woman. So I think that's it though. So because I think the whole stalking thing was real. I think, like, you know, a stalking and I liked it thing was not real. You know, so that would make a lot more sense to me than the whole thing's not real. So, it's just like him when he fantasizes about certain things about his life. Um, like, he pretends he's on the talk show. And all that stuff. So, we're coming to another break point in his life. Uh, basically, when he just realizes that if I'm going to be nobody, I'm going to take control of my own life. But in a very, not in a good way. Because the first thing he does, like, Mom used to tell me that, that, um, life, life is a tragedy. Well, life isn't a tragedy. It's, my life is a comedy. And he takes the pillow from beneath, uh, her, her head and pretty much, uh, suffocates his mom and here's the thing about that scene it really disturbed me because um, they show the body afterwards and I'm like that looks like a dead body that I would recognize like if I oh my gosh that's uh, you know it's um, I've seen a lot of sort of 
dead bodies in my lifetime and I'm like oh jeez that, that, that kind of struck personal um so that 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 really got me I was like disturbing because of I recognize what a dead body looks like I guess so it's 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 it's, it's like oh wow that 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 gave me chills I didn't oh that 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 did kind of disturb me because it's the it's not the violence that's really bad in this movie it's how grounded how real how gritty it is in the intent the context of it Mm. So, and so he starts. He stops uh, taking his medication. He doesn't care about it. He says um, he feels better without it. Um, and so he gets a call from the the TV show that made fun of him. And like, yeah, we want to have you on the show. And he's like, heck yeah, I'll be on the show. And so, there, he starts to prepare for it, and uh, two friends from his job come by, and they see that they're better because they heard about his death. I'm like, well, let, let's go by and see him. And so, um, the guy who betrayed him is there with this other guy who is a, they make fun of him because he's a, well, as they call him, they call him the midget. I'm, I'm not trying to be toward of that's a quote from the movie and yes he is that small so uh and so he's really good to arthur though like he's the only one that treats him with like a minimum of respect because he's the one that's like to make fun of all the time especially if you have a disorder you know and so i'm not saying short disorder what i'm saying is um what i'm saying is people made fun of him therefore he understands they're making fun of him because of, because he's different so, um, so they come by and he's like, and he, he puts, and before that he put scissors in his pocket because he's dyeing his hair green. Disorderly, oh, you're lucky no one can see that. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, so this is the guy who framed him at work with the gun and so pretty much what you kind of get is that he got revenge on his mom for pretty much not telling him not telling him the truth and him, and in his mind the mom is the bad guy and so she deserves to die so he's not above killing people at this point like he's killed four people so far and so um so he gets the scissors and in the middle of talking about like what you know the job yet, all, all of a sudden like he takes this pair of scissors and puts them in the put them in his neck and then from the neck on into his head. Yeah, five. Now it's five. And he bet. And when he's down on the floor trying to recover from what happened, like I'm sure he's like dead, but Arthur wants to double tap, and he starts aggressively slamming his head against the against the like one of the um one of the pathways in the uh, one of the door pathways in, in the in in his apartment like bam 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 I'm like jeez man and then it's like and then the 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 little guy I I I, f I forget his name he's like oh crap what are you doing and so like there was this very dark comedy part to it though because like he goes it's like he's like i'm not gonna hurt you because you pretty much because you can you can infer that he's never done anything wrong to him in fact he was in fact he says at that time like you're the one who was nice to me but there's a very dark comedy after that where he says you can go and um and he scares him like he <laughs> just to make just to make himself laugh, you know. And it was kind of funny, but then he tries to open the door. He he can't reach the the chain to uh you know cuz the uh it's kind of like in, in in a hotel room. They have the chains. And so um he's like 
uh, Arthur? He's like, yeah. He's like, I, I can't reach the chain. He's like, oh, okay, hold on. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what? Did you... He just killed somebody in this really intense scene. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> and then you decide to run this really dark joke about how short people can't reach certain things. Like, why don't you just have the guy that I can't reach the top shelf? <laughs> I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of funny. And I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> no, it's in the movie. Like, I'm not lying. <laughs> and I'm like, why'd you do this? <laughs> it's really, really cruel and dark, but it's still funny. And so, um... <laughs> Well, uh, I, I can I probably show that scene. I'm like, why? But pretty much, yeah, he's now like, I need to get revenge. And so, um, next on his hit list is probably, and oh, by the way, there's a really, really good note in his book that he looks back on. Because um, uh, in his notebook, he writes down, uh, and, and the psychiatrist sees it uh, before she gets fired or pretty much uh cut and uh it says i hope my death makes more sense than my life and so um so he turns it out in his book and he wants to kill himself on tv on on the show he prepares for it he mentally like views it he's on the couch and you can hear the laughter you know, and like, um, and he's like, hey, you want to hear a joke? Knock, knock. Who's there? And he points a gun at himself, like, boom. You know. And he's like, huh. and you can hear the, the pretend crowd go, ah, ha, 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 funny. And they start clapping. I was like, gee, man. <laughs> I'm like, this, th this movie will give you chills. Like, and so he wants to go on the show and, and, and kill himself. And so he gets ready, he dyes his hair, he puts on the makeup, uh, and then he goes to the top of the stairs, and he dances, and like he does all these weird dances in this movie, and but man, it, it feels like he is now, this is who he is now, this guy who just doesn't give a crap anymore about anything, he doesn't believe in anything, he is just a guy looking out for himself and wants to be important, you know. Um, and so he, with that now realization, he dances to, um, I forget what he dances to. Mm, it was so weird. I'm like, that's the music he's dancing to? I'm like, this is awfully modern for this movie, but okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. It's uh, it's something from like the 80s, like hip hop era. And I'm like, what? It's, it's, it's like that era of like, um, oh, hey, 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 Molag. <laughs> How's it going? Um, I'm just talking about, I'm just talking about Joker. Cause I just saw it for the first time and I'm getting to the, uh, the part where he goes outside in his full costume for the first time. Because it actually builds up to it pretty good. Yeah. Mmm. My leg five's been around. And, uh, like, the music he dances to, it's sort of like, um... You ever heard of, um... What's, uh... uh Doggo dot... P uh, Doggo dot wave? It's that one where they do the, um... The loop again, not the... It's a sin, you know, the... And they put the dog in instead. You know. <laughs> Off the of Pacific Stream? Well, yeah, duh. Because uh, I just saw the Joker and I thought I'd get my thoughts on it. It's kind of like in that era of hip-hop. And I'm like, the rest of the movie has been classical, like, um, music of the time periods of the 50s. And uh, all that stuff. It's very piano. But this is like 80s hip-hop all of a sudden. And I'm like, okay. This is unusual, but I don't, actually I didn't like the music choice. The music choice in the trailer was a lot better. 
because uh, he is celebrating his newfound identity in this icon for the resistance and knowing he's um, he is now important and uh, he dances he he no longer sees the stairs as something that's depressing in fact he says I'm gonna go down these stairs and I'm happy to do it like it's the opposite of him in the beginning of the movie where he would climb the stairs and I know I'm, I did this point before, but I think it's worth repeating because it's obviously the, he's climbing the stairs to reach a level of normal, but he's climbing down the stairs now because he doesn't want to be that person anymore. He is walking away from being that person. And it's kind of ruined <laughs> at the end by these cops. And the cops who want to ask him questions about the subway murder or the L train murder. I, I don't know. I don't know about trains. I never took public transportation, really. <laughs> so, um, I've barely taken the bus. <laughs> so, um, so they chase him around and he goes to the, um, and he goes inside the, the, the train station again where there's a bunch of, people dressed as clowns because they're going to a protest tonight you know inside the train I took a deep dive to his uh, to his misfortune oh yeah like his misfortune is like um there are in fact um one of the quotes uh that's a good point my leg uh, in fact um one of joker's quotes from the batman uh the animated series which i i like and not like because it's not as good as the the Batman T T A S, but the um, the whole one quote from Joker is really good. It's like all it takes is one bad day, and it's like that's yeah because that's pretty much what Joker like. It's kind of reversed in every iteration of Joker is that it was one bad day, like either by his own making or by just the world around him. Like, it is, it depends on which Joker you're talking about. Because when it comes to Jack Napier, um, uh, Joker, he calls that to himself. And um, if you're talking about Arthur Fleck, it was the society and the, not really society, but the world just kept going downhill and he got, and he got caught in the mudslide of of the rest of society you know like the psychiatrist says or the social worker says they don't care about me they don't care about you I'm sorry that's just the way life is right now you know and so very good sort of still staying with the comic book nature of what Joker is but still actually having a real grounded in reality artistic movie so anyways, um, he takes off a um, into the subway where they're having that protest and these people are in Joker masks. And and so he decides, I'm going to lose them in the crowd. But the problem is they're all wearing masks and not makeup. So he's still in trouble from, the, from, from, from these two uh, police officers. And uh, so he takes off a mask. He's like, hey, you jerk. You know, it's like, and so like the other guy thought like, hey, <laughs> and so he starts a fight on the train because there was a misunderstanding and so he, he gets lost in the crowd and puts on the mask and and they're trying to tackle one of the um, they're trying to say like the the police trying to moving through with, with a gun and a um, and a badge I won't have to. <laughs> you should still see it. I don't... Look, here's the thing. Most of this movie was spoiled for me too. But, dang. Seeing it is another story. I mean, it's just... It's powerful. Like, it, it left me with a lot of chills. Hmm. Joker would fail. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to talk about that later on. No, it did not fail. Uh, it's one of the films that said like we don't need a worldwide release to make lots of money and be a great film 
so it's like yeah like you you kind of pokes the hole in that like it's 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 one movie you bring up whenever some, someone says if it's not good around the world then who cares oh sure yeah 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 yeah. oh sure that's fine like i understand like um i have no interest in comedies nowadays they all kind of like this unnecessarily vul- vulgar and i'm like i don't like that it's not like i don't like vulgar comedy but when you go too far with the vulgarness and all that stuff i'm like i don't care you're you're trying too hard, but <laughs> let me remove it better. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Even though I make lots of noise up here, mm. it's not really a review. I'm just talking about it. So I want to make a real review and actually have like footage. But whatever. Speaking of the voices, I need to do that more m- more stuff. Uh, about getting getting the perfect boss under uh going but anyways so during that whole thing like when he's trying to the the people with the clown mask interrupt them it's like you and you I don't know why I said you uh, on a deep level oh yeah and so it's like boom and so someone tries to get in the way and and out of reflex the cop shoots one of the one of the uh, really one of these protest slash rioters because they are rioters at this point and um, and so they take it as an offense and so they and Joker just loves it I mean Arthur Fleck he's not called the Joker yet really and so um, Arthur Fleck is uh sees what's happening and like he he loves it and even when the person gets shot it's like i don't care like i have lost all interest in the human being and um and so at so after after they get shot uh after this one guy gets shot is like they bum rush these cops and beat the crap out of them and arthur is just like good you deserve it after cause it's like uh one for chasing him and two because he likes it because he thought they put the mother in the hospital by have having a stroke you know because again he's not just after random people he's um and but he doesn't care what happens as a result of him going after people but he's definitely not targeting pe- uh people who don't really deserve it so um and that's why he's going on the show because um he definitely wants to show that um that he is now this different man he wants to be important and so he goes on the show and of course that famous scene of course actually before the famous scene he they kind of have this conversation about like it's he's like why are you wearing that paint are you a on the protester um, and the guy and some of the tv people are like let's not have that on there because we want to stay apolitical as possible you know and like he's like oh no 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 this is not political this is just a this is just makeup for my act and so um he's like and they're like oh, robert de niro is like okay that's fine you know as as long as you don't get political as long as you don't like say something vulgar you know, everything like that. It's on public TV. A very clean show. Just don't go, uh, don't go under the belt with with jokes. You know, pretty much. And and they're like, and he's like, sure, yeah. Which is, by the way, like Arthur Fleck does not care. <laughs> he he knows. It's uh, so he knows that after after that night, it's not going to matter because he's he's going to kill himself as he does practice in the mirror a little bit when he holds his gun up to his throat he's like yeah and so he asked him to go on as the joker he was like and robert de niro says why because that's what you called me before when when you put my footage on screen you called me you called me a joker and he's like is that true is that true which i'm not even sure because i don't remember but yeah so he's like okay i'll do that and so they play his clip again beforehand and you can see like uh the tension sort of rise within 
within him a little bit, but he stays in complete character with himself. And he starts to, and he loves being a center of attention. So when he is called out, he starts to dance, and then and all this stuff. He's he he, he loves it, and so he goes on the couch on the on the seats next to the David Letterman guy, <laughs> sort sort of guy, and he's like, "Hey, how's it going?" You know, and he kind of and then he stares off in the space. He's like, and and Robert De Niro's like, "Hello, like, what are you doing here?" What's with the costume? It's like, is that is that is that political? It's like, no, 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 it's not political. I don't believe in political stuff. And he says, I don't believe in anything. And he's like, what does that mean? I'm like, so I heard you're a stand-up comedian, blah blah blah. You know, they go through this conversation about, and he tells this really awful joke. It's uh, it's like knock knock, and he's like, you need to look up that. <laughs> he's like, because he had to look up the, the the punchline or whatever. And but, in that book, again, he sees the quote. I hope my death makes more sense than my life. And so he, um, and so he, he tells a knock knock joke as his, as his opener. He's like knock knock. And it's like okay, who there? You know. And he's like the police. Your son, ma, your, the police. Uh, mother, your son's dead. <laughs> And they play the trumpet, and it's like that's not funny at all. It's like, what? and then he um, he goes on this rant about pretty much saying like people like you don't like people like me. You you people like you like kick aside us. You know, if if I were dead, you just walk over my corpse. Wouldn't even care. And he, and he, and he confesses to um, killing the three people on the on the subway. And it's nothing to do with Jared. Eh. But anyway, yeah, he, he starts to do Oscar. Because as far as you know, he's not going to survive tonight. So he might as well just confess everything. You know, it's... um, Oh my... It's such a tense scene because you don't know what he's going to do. I'm like... Because another thing he did that when he was dancing, it's like he was pretending that he was with that girl. And he was like... Hey, you want to dance? I'm like, like, do you like my dancing? You know what dancing I don't like? And he sh shoots the wall because he pretends that's another person trying trying to hit on her or something. It's like, it's weird. So, there's some apprehension. Like, what's he going to do? Is he going to just fire randomly? Is he going to kill himself like he planned? Or is he going to, you know, kill Robert De Niro? Because that does enter your head. So, he he does just that. He was like, how about another joke? It's like, it's like, man, the people who just like you are like, boom. And he, he, he shoots Robert De Niro on live TV. And people like scream and rush out. And, um, and the next people on the, like the next people on the chair. <laughs> it's kind of funny because they're like, they're just, they're holding each other and they're like, oh no, what are we going to do? And like, cause I'm, I wasn't sure what they were gonna do, but it's like, uh, shouldn't you run? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> like, but, and so like after that, he just sits there with a s smug look on his face, like, hmm, that proves my point, <laughs> you know. And um, and after that, he's like, you know what? It like you can you, you kind of read it on his face. Like, you know what? You deserve some more. Bop, 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 bop. And he shoots him like a bunch more times. And then he dances some more and goes up to the camera. And he does his, uh, and he does the guy's quote for him at, at the end of the show. Hey, remember folks, that's life. But he didn't get to finish it. He got cut off before life. It's like, remember, that's boop. You know, and then that Indian, um, circle like thing that's the end of her broadcast day sort of thing <laughs> and he gets spammed on the news like the the news is on it and they're talking about like someone in downtown gotham like that's uh, the the murray show I, for, I forget his name i think it's called the murray show or something it's like he got shot and like you know all this stuff and like all these stories about him and so he gets arrested of course and um, this 
sparks a sort of what was going on right now. It's it's a uh, it's just sort of interesting how a simple like murder can just spark something, you know. And um, and so he he um, he's in the comp car and people are cheering him on as well as looting and doing whatever they want and uh, the cops are out there trying but they're being like overtaken you know and and Arthur Fleck is just laughing and think it's funny and the cop's like you think this is funny and then he gets hit and Arthur Fleck is knocked on knocked unconscious but what you don't know is that uh, Thomas and Martha Wayne Why'd you say that name? Martha! So. So, um, they, um, they get out of the theater and they're like, and there's this riot going on. And so they decided to go through an alley because we're not going to go through those. You see, I kind of love that about this movie. It actually makes an excuse why Thomas and Martha Wayne would go through an alleyway. I've always found that really, really bad about other Batman stories. Like, why are they going down the alleyway? For a shortcut? I'm like, that makes no sense. It's the city. Why would you go through an alley? For a shortcut. <laughs> but in this movie, it makes sense because there's a riot going on. And so, like, we're not going that way because <laughs> there's rioters over there. And so they go through an alleyway to dodge the rioters. I'm like, well, that makes sense because there's nothing down there. And so, um, so this one guy recognizes Thomas Wayne, gets out a gun and shoots him, which is pretty much the, the Batman, how, how he becomes Batman scene. And then some guy says like, have you, have you, have you seen the devil in the pale moonlight? I'm just kidding. That, that, that doesn't happen. But still, it's like, it makes sense. And as uh, Arthur Fleck now called the I'll call him Joker now because that's his name now the Joker he comes out and unconscious and they put him on top of a car he wakes up and he's dancing in front of a crowd they love him for it and then he's laughing inside of a cage like I'm not really a cage but inside this padded room as he's sort of explaining it I guess you don't know if he's explaining it or if it's something that didn't happen, or is it just, um, is he trying to describe what happened to him in his life as this, the same, uh, caseworker that she had is now a psychiatrist, which is why I think that, um, people think it's a, a dream, or she get hired, or... There's many explanations to what happened there at at the end. And um and so and he's like ha ha he's like what's so funny and he's like you wouldn't get it. And so he walks away with blood on his feet, like and he's like, um he has no shoes on. It's like, did you kill her? I'm like, and he starts to dance again. Like, oh, okay. And becomes that they're cunning. Well, yeah, I don't know if this is the Joker or if it's just what inspired the Joker in the first place. It kind of reminds me of Batman Beyond, where it's basically there's a gang called the Jokers, <laughs> where it's like they took inspiration from the Joker. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's not cunning. Maybe he's just... Because this may be a different iteration of the Joker. Maybe it's not real at all. Maybe it is just a dream. Uh, because that final scene with him walking is very dreamlike. Uh, the sun shines in, his, in the exact way. Um, he's dancing out in the hallways. And then he lets... I think he lets all this, the, the people out, you know spin on it yeah I don't know it's it's very interesting uh because you could talk about that last scene for ages but I don't want to <laughs> isn't that why you're here not really I'm just saying like so yeah 
about the people not wanting people to see it. Okay? I'm not going to lie. Um, these uh, people who believe that this is an... Uh, this is a... I don't know if they call it an incel movie. They think, like, it's about a white male who's oppressed. It's an incel movie! I'm like, no, it's really not. It's just a guy who got bashed down by society itself. You know, it's it's a very... Um, and they said, like, this will inspire a new shooting based off the Dark Knight. You know, so they didn't want to... So they got cops out at major theaters and nothing happened. It represents the underdog, sort of. It sort of represents the underdog. To me, it represents that um, you can make an you can make an excuse in your own head for 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 anything. Because um, that's pretty much what uh, all people do. Like if you lied about something, you're gonna make an excuse in your head why that lie why that lie was justified. Or if you stole something. Uh, it's because you needed it. That's the justification. You know, uh, I'm not saying that. You know, uh, I'm not saying you. Uh, different people have different reasons for doing what they do. Um, it's never just um, when it comes to thinking of something. It's it's all gray. But when you make the decision, it's a black and white in the end. You know, you either do it or you don't. You know, and then the gray is making excuses. Um, so when it comes to the, the way they were trying to say, like, um, by the way, the Dark Knight thing wasn't even dressed as the Joker. It was guy who got his best friend with him and, uh, they, when had red hair, when had blue hair, they decided to do that because they were best friends, not because he wanted to be the Joker. He, he knew that there'd be a crowded room at a at a theater and therefore he shot it up it could have been any movie so yeah that that's been debunked for a while so but of course the media don't understand how things work because um they don't believe in the individual's responsibility they they believe that um that um art of, of movies and oh yeah sure man yeah thanks for coming by um, I'm talking about the societal issues of entertainment now they think that the entertainment industry owns owes an explanation to people um, to to why they bring bring these products and if you don't try to help society with your films if you don't instead of just being entertainment then you're not doing what you need to do. It needs to have a message against something we 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 like as our side of our side of politics dictate, you know. But they forget that when it comes to it's sort of like uh, violence in video games, which has never been proven ever. Well, because I mean, if you think about like. Uh, it's, it's uh, whatever. Such a logical perspective, or still, mm. I'm yeah. I'm I'm just saying that like um, when you have a an entertainment that's very dark and uh, is made for adults, but it takes from a property that's made that they think is made for kids. And it's a message they don't prefer. It there's a wild overreaction to it because uh, they think um, if you make another kind of representation they don't like, then it needs to be not shown. Um, it, it may cause people to be violent because there's no such thing as an individual agency to anything. That's why the Joker was considered a. Um, uh, it, it's all about the actor's skin color that made him a monster and he but the uh, the people who actually criticize it that way I've never seen the movie so I don't care because I'll, and the people who did see the movie 
weren't really paying attention to how because it's the th here's the thing though about the movie it's actually um against the people who would actually censor it which is which which, which is kind of interesting because um he is sort of that person you know but let's see when it comes to um um which is how like you got critics um saying it was one of the worst movies I've ever seen even though it won awards um it won Oscars it had an audience score of like what like in the 80s uh, 80 percent from audiences and it had like um hundreds and hundreds of reviews saying how good it is or or even some of being average and on the other side of rotten tomatoes when they come to the critic side they give the lowest scores possible now this is important because um are trash they are trash because um i see enough reactions to um uh to batwoman to know that 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 that's not a 80 percent on rotten tomatoes by critics that is not no no the audience got that one right as well because uh disney actually when it when it comes to like uh disney actually hid results from rotten tomatoes at one point when it comes to the last jedi and all that stuff so i'm like why would i ever trust rotten tomatoes ever again or any site that that really wants to hide certain criticisms or hire people based on what their views are to them what their views are before a movie and i'm like why would you do that and the joker succeeded domestically mm. some merit uh yeah i mean there is merit to it it's just that you have to decipher what what uh what a good review is what a bad review is you know because like i used to think a bunch of reviewers were good and now i'm like these people are trash now <laughs> but you uh so you pretty much have to grow as a sort of a movie uh, a sort of a movie goer sometimes not every movie is gonna be artistic one or whatever than what it's worth <laughs> more merit than what it's worth okay Fair enough. I, I I remember when I was like that when it came to movies. So I'm like, yeah, everything's great. Nope. <laughs> then I used to be on the opposite. Like, everything's awful. No, that's not true either. Maybe I'm just not really in the movies anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was... Um, I don't watch many movies anymore. That's just the way it is for me. Because... Whenever I see a trailer, I'm like, wow, CGI. <laughs> I'm not saying CGI is always bad, but man, I'm like, that looks fake. I can't get into it. This is why Joker looked interesting from the trailer. That trailer is amazing. Trailer is amazing. I mean, I'm like, that looks amazing. And then, like, uh, I remember when I watched the trailer for Ghostbusters 2016. Awful trailer. I mean, I'll be like, wow, that's the first video I give a downvote to. First video, I'm not kidding, because it was so bad. And then they came up with the commercial saying, like, if you hated the Ghostbusters trailer, you shouldn't come to see it. And I'm like, well, fine, there's your lost sale. Like, daggone it. <laughs> like, why would you do that? Oh, my gosh. People used to be like, trailers used to be like eight minutes long. Because, um... And, like, if you ever wa go back and watch the original Ghostbusters trailer, it's long as crap. And I'm like, why is it long? <laughs> why is it that long? Oh, uh, man. Still, Joker trailer gets you hyped up like nothing. When he walks out in that suit and they play that dun 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 dun. And I'm like, dang. I used to think he looked like junk, but then I, I watched it again and I was like, Actually, I like that suit. I like the the makeup. I I like how visceral it is. Like, uh, and I wasn't disappointed in the movie. It's not perfect. There, there are some things. I'm like, that shot could be better. That effect could be better. 
But overall, man, the acting, the camera work, uh, the way they filmed it, um, really good. The characters, the character of Arthur Fleck is really, really interesting. And, uh, and the acting on him is superb. Agenda to me? Oh, absolutely. Like, um, if we, uh, I watched the, uh, Red Letter Media of Ghostbusters 2016, and I'm like, no wonder it was so bad. Because, um, it wasn't because of the female cast. That's how they advertised it. You know, that's how they advertised it. That's, that's, that's that part of the agenda. The filmmaking part, though, was, um, he just let them do jokes and never stopped them to direct them in a certain way. They just let them do whatever they wanted. You know, and I'm like, that's not how you direct a film. <laughs> like, this is, no wonder it was so, like, bad or average to some people. Well, I'm like, jeez. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not a good idea. Yeah, I, 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 absolutely. Um, um, you see, here's the thing. Um, as one person said on the internet, I'm diversity is fine, but forced diversity is a bad idea. Forced diversity, um, it puts your artistic merit at risk, and it rarely works, all the time. Like, um, for example, um, there's um, when it came to the uh, Shawshank Redemption. Uh, in, in Stephen King's book, it was another white man, but instead they hired uh, Morgan Freeman. Like, that was forced s sort of diversity, but here's the thing. Morgan Freeman's a good actor, and the um, and you had a good director, which, you, which could uh, ad uh, adapt the book, you know, really well. Shawn Take Redemption is one of, other one of my favorite movies, and that one's dark too. Like, uh, so, so this was disturbing on another kind of level, though. It was very. It showed the violence in a very grounded way. While in the Shawshank Redemption, uh, the the violence sort of happens off screen, and your imagination makes up for it. And it's like, eh, <laughs> like I don't want. Ugh. So yeah, it's it's sort of the opposite way. Well, I don't know what else to say about this movie other than like um. It's a uh, society message. It still holds true today about um, about all it takes is one spark to light a match to start uh, to start these small revolutions, especially and how a man can be pulled down in it but rise above it at the same time. I'm like it. It happens all the time. Like I'm sure it's on your mind right now. Who you're thinking of right now? Who has done the same thing in death or in life when it happened? Mm. So, this, uh, yeah, so I'm probably going to say about for now. I don't know what to say about the, the, the movie itself. And um, I hope I got somebody to think about the, the movie or to let's enjoy the movie again or I just watch it and I would totally give it. A recommended watch to to anyone really, because uh, it's not that bad movie that that, that people want it to, uh, to uh to be. It's not the sort of this anti-left movie they want you to believe it is, or it's not. It's not really not anti anything. It's just really um, uh, they're a sort of. A betrayal of what happens in a sort of society. Mm. Well, okay, yeah, I'm I'm glad. It's kind of funny because uh, Seek was here earlier, and I got him to. Um, uh, I did this on how I did the uh, October version of this, where I talked about The Exorcist. He said that like, he wasn't really interested in it, and I got him to like go and go and actually watch that and give it another try, because that movie is. So good. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think about it for now and um, so long and yeah. Um, if I had to give it a number, I'd probably give it. A, I'd probably give it an eight. You know, out, out of ten, it's definitely like um, it definitely has some 
things about it that I'm like, I'm not, I'm not sure I can give it a perfect s score or anything like that. I don't have any reason not to give it a 9 if you really like this sort of thing. But yeah, I'd say for an average moviegoer, um, for the average moviegoer, you would still enjoy it. Cause, um, because it has levels where the average moviegoer, mo moviegoer can enjoy it. Uh, because it doesn't leave you in the dark because it's artsy. Like, haha, interpret that. No, an average, an average moviegoer doesn't want to interpret what they are so much, but it still leaves stuff to the imagination and discussion without leaving the common, uh, the common moviegoer out, out in the dark, you know? So yeah, I'll say goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Take care.